the Joe Matteris second documentary. What is this called? The Rise and Fall of an Italian Psycho. No, Italian Psycho, another Joe Matteris documentary. This is the first 16 minutes. You just got a sneak peek there. Porcelain is back. Oh, you hear that? Porcelain's got a new documentary coming out. He's he's back, and he's taking no prisoners. He's going to show us what a stupid dick Joe Matteris is again. For those who don't know, Porcelain is a YouTube documentary maker. He's closely associated with the uh, Opie and Anthony subreddit, uh, typically covering topics of interest to them. He broke out on the scene with a documentary about uh, drug addict Joe Matteris. He followed up with a documentary about the king of prop comedy, Jim Norton. Then he had one about the balding broadcaster, Sam Roberts. And he closed out with one on mass shooter, Sam Hyde. Unfortunately, at this point, Porcelain had drawn enough attention to himself that people started looking into him and found out that, among other things, he was using sock puppet accounts posing as fake fans to encourage people to subscribe to his Patreon and also to attack his competition, accusing them of plagiarism while keeping his real account out of controversy. This led to him retiring deleting his Reddit account and his YouTube channel, destroying all his films and his model and interviews that are set to royalty-free piano music. And it's here that I want to take a break from talking about porcelain, and I wanted to discuss the valence curve. Here's our graph. We've got visibility plotted on one axis and valence on the other. Visibility is pretty straightforward. It's how many people look at you, how many people think about you, how many people consume your product or whatever. Valence is kind of more abstract. It's how those people who do see you, it's how, they, uh, it's how they perceive you. It's their feelings towards you. And they range from negative to positive. And when we are talking valence here, we're talking public perception. Of course, everybody has fans and detractors, but a majority of consumers that consume your product tend to have a consensus on the thing that they're viewing. Now, this curve is kind of straightforward. The more visible you are, the, the stronger people's feelings about you are the more extreme the valence. And, and, for example, there are no giant celebrities in the tabloids every day that the public just feels so-so about. They are either beloved or they're hated. And, and this exists even in small little internet communities. Mobility along the curve is really easy in one direction and difficult and arduous in the other. Here's an example. Let's say you're on a hugely popular sitcom playing the wacky neighbor of a guy who likes to come up with a different catchphrase every episode. You are beloved. People watch your show, they like your character, they think you're funny. Your visibility is high, and your valence is positive. And then the show ends. And as time goes on, you do some smaller projects, but your visibility decreases, and your fans aren't as fanatical. They don't buy weird screen print paintings of you or whatever the fuck that shit was, but they like you. They miss you. They still feel good about you. Then one day, you're doing a set at the Laugh Factory, and you notice that some chatty Cathy's interrupting your show in the front row are African American. And you say to them this. Shut up! 50 years ago, you had you upside down with a fucking fork up your ass! You can talk, you can talk, you can talk your brain now, motherfucker! Roll his ass out, he's a nigger! He's a nigger! He's a nigger! Oh my God. A nigger, look, there's a nigger! And then you follow up with... Cracker, I have to call him in Cracker, I have to dig up! Are you threatening me? Well, now you're in big trouble. Because now everyone's watching you again. All eyes are on you. You're very visible. But people aren't happy with you. You've allowed yourself to go to the other end. Negative valence. People hate you. And you go on TV and you try to apologize, but that's not going to work. It doesn't work because people don't want to like you. you. You have to make your way all the way up the curve again. You have to disappear. You have to become invisible before people will accept you becoming a positive figure again. So you move to India, you dip into your savings, you become a Buddhist, you stop wiping your ass. And then maybe if you're lucky... Ten years down the line, Christy Alley gives you a shot on her show, but it gets canceled after one season. It's common sense. This is why public apologies don't work. People don't want to hear from you. They want you to go away, and then maybe come back. But they want you to go all along the valence curve. Now, the funny thing is, when Porcelain was busted using a fake account to suck his own dick, 
It, it was embarrassing, but it was funny. The community wasn't angry at him. They, they were embarrassed for him, but they wanted him to keep doing the thing he does. He claims that after this was all exposed, people started harassing his family and it got weird, so he deleted everything without an explanation. I find this a little dubious. It reminds me of... Uh, one guy was saying that your kid's fucking dead. You know, and it's all like, look, I'm not going to fuck around with that shit. That shit's fucking stupid. You want to come after me? Come after me. My kid did nothing. She's eight months old. But okay, let's imagine this is true. His valence was still positive when he left, but the way he left actually made him more visible and less valent, moving him in uh, a lot of people's perception to the left side of the curve. Now to say porcelain is making a comeback is kind of, it's not exactly right. Porcelain didn't go away long enough to move to the center of the curve. In fact, th this documentary doesn't seem to be far off his usual production schedule. And if you weren't aware of the drama and you didn't notice his channel missing, when, uh, when the video comes out next week, you'd think you, you'd never know he went anywhere. What makes this interesting is Porcelain, as he is today, at least in the Reddit community, exists simultaneously on two sides of the valence curve. Opinion is completely divided. Some see him as a great content producer who was unjustly doxxed and harassed by the world's most retarded Discord server. Others see him as a self-congratulatory liar and coward who gets praise for fucking with others and then cowers when people fuck with him. And if I had to guess, it's about half and half. That's what makes this interesting. Going forward, as he boosts his visibility by releasing a new documentary, a consensus will be reached. There will always be fans and detractors, but the majority will make up their minds. And it really depends on whether or not he can shit on Joe Matarese better or worse than the last time he shit on Joe Matarese. Which, by the way, fucks with Joe Matarese's valence curve, but that, this shit is getting too meta. And uh, 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 that, that's really all I got on the subject. Uh, fuck off. Shit. I knew I forgot something. Uh, I set this aside, but when I was writing this, I forgot to put it in. This is a piece of G describing the entire uh, porcelain situation. Somebody asked him about the porcelain drama, what happened, and piece of G had this to say. A gay man got mad at another gay man for doing some gay shit. Then a bunch of other gay men sided either with the first or second gay man. The second gay man was so gay he deleted all his work and account, which was super gay. Then a third gay man came and asked what happened, and a fourth gay man explained it to him. There, faggot, now you're all caught up. Th that's exactly what happened. 